Hi, everyone. My name is Amanda. Recently, I learned that all decisions in your life need to be well thought out. Otherwise, you might have to pay a heavy price for your mistake. My mistake cost me a year of my life. I'm used to making decisions really quickly. I thought I was young, and no matter how my life turned out, I would have time to change everything. So after school, I chose a college almost at random and moved there to study. And I was very lucky. I started the coolest period of my life. I had a lot of friends and a lot of free time that I could spend with them. So you can guess what we did most of the time. Of course, we were constantly hanging out. We took endless trips to clubs and parties. But the coolest thing is that during this time, I fell in love with someone. We were in the same class together. Chris was a great guy, and I was really glad he noticed me and asked me out. So we started dating, and our relationship was just super. He was attentive, sensitive, and sweet. And I should mention that he was from a fairly wealthy family, so we often went to cool places and expensive restaurants. He was just the boyfriend of my dreams. We both thought it was the love of a lifetime. So when he proposed to me a year later, I made a decision very quickly. I almost cried with happiness and just shouted, Yes, yes, of course, it's yes. So we had a beautiful wedding and a wonderful honeymoon, and I was just so happy that I made the decision to marry Chris. Then we were faced with the question of housing. We wanted to live together, but we weren't working yet, and we couldn't afford to buy an apartment. But Chris's parents gave us a wedding present. They paid a year's rent for us. They wanted us to be able to live comfortably. And in a year, we'd be out of college, and we'd start supporting ourselves. So we moved into a new apartment and started a new life together. Since we started living together, our lives became a little more quiet. I saw it as an opportunity to spend more time studying and finding a job. Of course, I missed that college rock and roll lifestyle a little, but now we were a couple officially, and we had to think about our future. Unfortunately, my husband had a different opinion. He just wanted to keep hanging out and continue to lead the same lifestyle. It was okay at the beginning. After all, I couldn't stop him from having fun. And soon I found a job, and I was very happy about it. I had financial independence, and I was even able to buy a car on credit. So now I spent half my life in college and the other half at work. It was hard, but I loved it. At some point, my husband began to drift away from me. It happened gradually. At first, Chris complained that I spent too much time without him and that he missed me very much. But then he started going to parties without me because I couldn't be out dancing all night and then spend the whole next day productively. Sometimes I'd make concessions and we'd go hang out, and on one of these evenings, we had our first serious fight. It was all about this girl, Clara. She was our classmate, and she was always hanging around Chris. So we were at a party and it was time to leave because I had to go to class in the morning. We began to say goodbye to everyone and Clara began to try to persuade Chris not to leave because all the fun was just beginning. My husband offered to stay but I wasn't going to and Clara called me a bore. But the most irritable thing was that Chris supported her. And that was when I began to fight with him. He was tired of me being absent from his life and I ruined the only time we had together. I was unhappy that he was acting like a child and didn't understand that we were adults and that we had to think about our future. So the situation was really tense. But in the end, we came to an agreement and reconciled. At least, that's what I thought. A few weeks later, I had trouble. My car broke down on the way from college to work. I waited for a long time for a tow truck and realized that, on this day, I would not have time for work. So I called my boss and took the day off. After I left the car at the service station, I went home. And when I walked into the apartment, I saw something I hadn't expected to see at all. Some clothes were carelessly scattered around, and I heard two voices from the bedroom. When I opened the door, I saw my husband lying in bed with Clara. Oh, my God. I've never yelled so loud in my life. And I had never said the words I said at that moment. I kicked Clara out of the house and I started fighting with Chris. You can imagine that it wasn't a very pleasant conversation. And what annoyed me most was that Chris didn't feel guilty. That bastard cheated on me and tried to make me feel guilty for it. 
He said that I didn't spend enough time with him and that I had changed a lot in the last few months. I wasn't going to forgive him, so we talked about divorce. But there was one issue. I had nowhere to live. Plus, I had a car loan, so I couldn't afford to go rent another apartment. So I decided that I was going to just stay there. After all, this apartment was a wedding gift for the two of us. Chris was against it, but he had no choice. His parents liked me, and if I told them what he had done to me, he'd be punished. Neither of us wanted to give in. So we stayed in this apartment, only I moved into another room. Of course, Chris didn't like that I decided to stay, so he tried to make my life miserable from the start. I spent the whole day at college and work, and when I tried to relax at home, he was always listening to loud music or hanging out with Clara. Of course, this provoked a lot of fights, but they always ended the same way. If I didn't like something, then I should leave. But I learned to tolerate his provocations, and I even felt like my life had improved, and that the next six months that I would have to live in this apartment would not be so painful. I quietly paid off my car loan and saved money for the move. But then Chris crossed the line, and Clara started living with us. Freaking Clara! I hated everything about her. She was a disgusting person, and she looked like a stupid doll. Only this doll knew how to say nasty things to me. From that point on, my roommates were not just passive-aggressive. They moved into an act of assault. They were stealing my food, throwing away my stuff, and a couple of times I noticed them poking around in my room. They seemed determined to get me out of the house. They not only made my life hard at home, but they also tried to humiliate me in front of my friends and classmates. One time I was walking in from work, and I heard loud music as I approached the apartment. When I opened the door, I saw this horror. A lot of people were dancing and having fun. Garbage and bottles were scattered everywhere. It was clear that Chris and Clara were having a party. At that point, I got really angry, turned off the music, and started screaming that the party was over and that everyone had to leave immediately. Naturally, everyone was very unhappy about this, and Clara began to add fuel to the fire. She said, Thank you for ruining the fun, Miss Amanda Bohr. And then everyone booed me. It was clear that she had said that on purpose to embarrass me and to start a fight between me with my friends. My patience was nearing its limit, but things were going to get better soon. Our final month of renting the apartment began, and it coincided with our final exams. There was a lot of pressure during this time because their result would determine our future, and preparing for exams was difficult because I lived with two freaks. So I tried to put on my headphones and listen to music while I went over my preparation materials. I put a lot of work and time into them, but one day they were gone. Of course, I immediately thought that Chris stole them because he was taking the same exam. I was preparing to fight again, but when I went to his room, he wasn't home. So I decided to search his room, and soon I found the folder that belonged to me. But suddenly, I came up with a plan. I decided not to take my notes back. On the contrary, I could use them to trick Chris. I spent a few hours making fake cheat sheets with made-up formulas and incorrect answers. And then I switched them. So I got my stuff back, and I framed Chris. The day before the final exam, I packed my things and prepared to move. For the first time, Chris was happy. He saw that I was going to leave, and he just sat in his room, satisfied, and quietly prepared for the exam. That was all I needed. He didn't even notice the trick. All those years in college that he spent at endless parties and did not pay attention or study, I'm surprised he hadn't been thrown out yet. The important day had come. It was difficult, and I was very nervous. But I did it, and I got an A. This meant that I had completed this phase of my life, and I had done it perfectly. And, as I had planned, Chris and Clara failed the exam. I bet they don't even know what the reason for their failure was. Now they have huge problems with their studies and even bigger problems with their parents. I called Chris's dad and told him how he behaved this year. He's a decent man, and he didn't expect his son to be such a jerk. And me? I'm very glad that I came out of this game a winner. And I was only able to do it because I wasted no time and effort to study and work. I've already paid off my car loan, and I can afford to rent a nice apartment and make plans for the future. And every decision that I will make going forward will be careful and well thought out. I lived in hell for a year because I couldn't see Chris as the person he really was. But it was an important lesson for me, 
And I will never repeat my mistake. Would you be